So, my name is Seth Asante. I'm the managing partner of Benti Angel Achai Nankuma. We are a 31 year old firm, and the firm has gone through several evolutions. The main practice areas of the firm are four. We have financial institutions and capital markets, which is a, a, a department I lead. We have energy and infrastructure. I lead that department as well. And then we have a disputes department, and then we have a corporate commercial department. So the firm is structured so that um, different partners lead these uh, departments with associates working under them. Now, we are a firm that has always had a very significant um, bias towards women. I think I recall that um, our founding partner, Kojo Bensienji, who passed away last year, used to tell us that his, his, his dream about the firm was women and their kids um, running around, kids running around the offices. So we always had that, um, that bias. In terms of statistics, we have in our partnership, we have 11 partners and eight of them are women. Now, in the, the lawyer population of the firm, 70% of our lawyers are women. In the admin side of the firm, approximately 58% of our admin staff are women. So it's very clear that, that there is a large concentration and a very strong contingent of women in both leadership and the general population of the firm. I don't think it is intentional. I think there are several explanations. We believe that is because we offer an environment that women are comfortable to work. And I think also that there is a patient development of, of a career which is, um, I think it's conducive for women. Um, we've had partners who've had been here from the beginning and have had all their children um, in the firm and uh, have now to, are risen to partnership. So I don't think we've sort of set out to recruit more women, but we've had an environment and a career structure that is conducive for a career woman who, is well, who has had a pursuit, be a mother, and, and I think people have found that conducive. So gender equity, gender inclusion, and gender equality are different, different terms. And they are all important for a law firm. I think as a man, when I hear of gender equity, I think most people misunderstand it to mean that the sex has to be treated equally. But I don't think that's the case. I think gender equity reflects our understanding that in our society, we have different um, levels of treatment and advantages for different genders. And therefore, in the organization, we need to um, organize our, our structure and our progression and our assessment, appraisal of people to reflect that there are some disadvantages that some sexes face, women face. And therefore, that has to be reflected to create a level playing field. And equality means that we should create a platform and an equal playing field for, for men and, 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 and women. And inclusion means that we should, in the organization, allow the voices of women to reflect in everything that we do. And I think in our organization is very important for us because if you, if you think that on our lawyer population, we have 70% women, then we cannot be developing policies that do not reflect the views of women. So in this governance structure of the firm, we have various committees that support the, the managing partner in decision making. And most of these committees are completely dominated by our female partners. And we listen to them, they give us direction. And I think in, in the little things that we do. So for instance, when we were developing our office, this office, we put in a crash and the firm, um, we, we furnished it. We were even at some point willing to hire a nurse to be in there to help mothers who wanted to bring their kids into the firm. 
Um, I think at now the crash is empty because there are no uh, nursing mothers around, but I'm sure it will be it will be full anytime soon. So that's that's how we we, we look at these things and how we want to enc we encourage um, the participation of women in our structures. I wouldn't say that there is um, there has been um, sort of a consistent approach across all firms in developing the interest of women um, in, in, in these firms. But I would say that I think um, there is generally um, a real um, understanding of the need to promote the interest of women. I mean, if you look at the Supreme Court, we've had a female, um, a woman chief justice. The Supreme Court has a, a strong population um, contingent of women judges. Uh, we've had attorney generals who are women. So the, in leadership in law in Ghana, I think we've done quite well in the promotion of interest in of women. But I think the key issue is about, actually at the beginning, the younger um, lawyers. I think we need to find in the law firms, we need to find um, avenues for promoting and creating a level playing field for women and also promoting their interests. I think the, at the younger levels, that's where I think the challenge is, not at the senior level. I think from what I understand, younger lawyers, the challenges that they face in the market, I mean, from what I understand speaking to younger lawyers, is really that, you see, when you take a young woman who comes into the profession, um, some of them want to start families, um, someone just got married, to maybe to people who are not in the profession and therefore don't understand the pressures of work. And therefore, you need an environment which allows, which, underst which understands your needs, so that we can give you time when you go on maternity leave, support you in maternal care, in, in a manner that doesn't affect your career progress. So I think at the beginning level, when young women come into the profession and are seeking to find their feet, starting families, that is where there's a need for much more equity in the way the firms organize the treatment of, of, of these firms, of these, of, these, of these women. I think that, that's, that's where I see. But I think, I mean, it's difficult for me to assess across where the challenges are. But I think, in general, I think we can do better. Most of the firms are around, even us, I think we can do better. I think we do our best, but I think all of us can do better. I think men should have a significant role. If you look at the population of lawyers coming out of, the, um, out of, the, out of our law schools, a large percentage are women. And if we want our best talents to develop, then leadership of firms, including men, both men and women, need to be interested in the progression of women, particularly the young ones in the profession. I think for the men, it is important that we are interested because in most of the cases, the lack of understanding um, sometimes is from men, but I think most also is from the women, uh, women as well. Um, I hear sometimes from the younger women that um, the most pe difficult people to convince are the older women about their needs. So I think it's not only the men who need to understand. I think people in leadership need to understand the needs of younger women coming and the challenges they face and create an atmosphere that they can develop and reach their fullest potential. In terms of support for women in progression in, in our firm, the statistics speak for itself. I mean, as I said, out of 11 partners, um, eight of them are women. We have, um, let me repeat the statistic again, 70% women in our fee earners. And I think it's because, I don't think we've had specific training in, 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 in sort of gender equity or anything like that. But we've had a policy where we want people to reach their fullest potential so that we support our women who have to go on maternity leave, people who need flexi work in time. Even before the pandemic came, when people work from home became a thing, we were willing to um, act people who wanted to take time off to do so and work from home. And for instance, I mentioned creating a crash in the office as well. Having that facility is very important. And also I think in, in, in understanding that, let me give you a specific example. In appraisals, when somebody goes on uh, maternity leave, it shouldn't affect their appraisal for that year. 
simply because the time that they spend in the firm during working, it's prorated in such a way that they, they are able to still have a good score, even though they are away from the office. And I think that generally, there's, it's, this is an environment where it's a, it's a complete meritocracy, where no one is, is giving sort of um, the short end of the stick because of the agenda. Um, it's just because you are the best. If you prove it, and th then you will have unlimited opportunity, training, your career progression. And I think in here, our doors are always open. We have policies that prevent harassment. And, and, and I think it's, it's been proven that it works. And we, we can't see any other way than, than that. I think having a good number of women in, in, in the firm contributes to who we are as a market leading firm in, in, in the country. And I think it goes back to the quality of people coming out of the law school. Uh, and I think if you look at our law school, the large number of people come, are women. And if you ignore that gender, then you are not getting the best people to work for you. And so we, we just, we don't, we, 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 we make sure that there isn't, a, there isn't any bias. And when we bring them in, we create an environment where they can flourish. And I think that doing that has helped us retain good talent. And I think some of our brightest people are, are women. And I think it will continue to be the case. This year, for instance, I think in the last intake of pupils we took, I think we took, um, we took four people, three of them are, are, are women. And I think it, will, it continues to show, in the, and this is a rigorous process of selection, and the best, only the best come out on top. And so it shows that the quality of people coming out of the law school, the best of them are women, and you can't ignore that if you want to get the best talent in your firm. And I think it, you, you can see it across the top law firms, that the majority of people who have stayed loyal to the firm, loyal to the cause, and willing to progress through the structures to become leaders are women. So gender equality for the progression of the profession is very important in my view. I think we have to start from the point of view that even as a general population, we have a large population of women in our country. So there's a large talent pool in that gender. We can't ignore that. If you then look at the number of people coming into the law schools and graduating, large population of women. If you ignore that, you ignore that to, uh, to, to your peril because then you are ignoring a large um, talent pool. And so for the legal profession, I, I, and as I said, I think as, as, the, as you grow up in the profession, I don't think there is, a, there is inequality in, in relation to the promotion of women, but we need to create much more opportunity at the early stages, much more um, opportunity for growth uh, in the structures of law firms so that young women are able to lead um, other interests that they have, raise families, marry, and, and also develop their profession. People should not have to make a choice between developing their profession and um, and having a family, and you need to have that, these structures. And I think that um, it, for, the, for the profession, it is very important because if you look forward to the future of the profession, I think that it is actually the, the future of the profession is providing equity in training, equity in opportunity for all sexes. Then we can retain our best talent. That's my view.